Hello, everybody. Welcome to ICC's Game of the Day. I'm your host for the round one, Joel Benjamin, and we have coverage of the uh, Eros Fit tournament in Foros in the Ukraine. And as I said, it's uh, round one. And we have a pretty interesting field, I think, and a big field for this tournament. Uh, interesting mix of uh, veteran, veterans and young players. And um, it's uh, hard to say who's going to win this tournament. But I think going in, probably a lot of eyes were on a couple of players who met in the first round. Uh, one of them being Magnus Carlsen, who of course has been uh, going great guns, doing all kinds of wonderful things in chess at only age 17. And he is coming off a match win against uh, the very formidable uh, Peter Lecko. And meanwhile, we have uh, Vasily Ivanchuk, who had that uh, terrific run in the MTEL tournament, which we uh, we had live uh, commentary here on ICC. Ivanchuk winning the first five games of that event and going on to a comfortable uh, tournament victory. And so you, I guess you have two players that are a little bit on a roll, and so it's interesting to see uh, how they would do in, in the uh, in the first round. So. Let's have a look at this game. Carlson playing white against Ivanchuk. And uh, Carlson plays d4. Uh, like a lot of players today, he's capable of playing d4, e4, just about anything. And uh, that is really kind of thanks to the uh, computer age that it's very easy to, to uh, learn openings now. And so players can be... Uh, much more complete at uh, at a young age, and it's very impressive in Magnus Carlsen. Meanwhile, his opponent Ivanchuk will play just about anything. Uh, he has no loyalties really when it comes to openings. He's prepared to look at everything and find ideas everywhere, and he is really amazing at it. Comes up with a lot of new ideas constantly, and here he goes for King's Indian defense. It's an aggressive uh, counterattacking opening. It shows Ivanchuk is uh, is looking to uh, maybe uh, go 5-0 and uh, to start this event as well, not afraid to lose uh, with this uh, aggressive choice of opening. Uh, but it is a bit risky, and uh, Kasparov, of course, eventually abandoned the opening and then abandoned playing chess and uh, left it to the younger generation to keep it going. Uh, and... Um, uh, Tamir uh, Rajabov, of course, is the biggest exponent of this opening now. But let's see how Carlson deals with it. Knight c6, attacking the center, and now we have the knight e7, the Mar del Plata variation. White has tried many moves in this position, and in the old days, um, White would retreat this knight in f3 most of the time, usually knight e1 or sometimes knight d2. And one of the ideas was to deal with the, uh, the quote, threat of knight to h5. And the move b4 has been around a long time, the bayonet attack, but it only began to be considered a very dangerous weapon for white uh, after um, a new move was found against knight h5 traditionally um, White had played either c5, which is the move that was a big uh, circa 1980 when I was learning all the stuff, and move g3. But kind of a big finesse for White was when it was the move rook e1 was found. And the idea is that if black comes in knight f4, White retreats bishop f1, and the knight on f4 is not very steady here. If black plays f5, White is ready to kick out the knight with with g3. So the maneuver knight h5, knight f4 is not entirely successful. So most of the time, black plays the move f5, and we have knight to g5. So we have a departure from what would happen in the old days when the knight would move away from f3, uh, 